Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemeg TV. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at gain staging in a little bit more detail. In the previous video on gain staging we took a look at working with virtual instruments and in this example we're going to be taking a look at a direct line input. So if you're micing your guitar up or taking your bass directly in or micing drums up then this is going to be a video for you. As we said in the previous video Gain staging is all about getting the levels right before they hit the faders. That gives you the perfect opportunity when you mix in to ensure that you're dealing with a complete parity across the board. So that means that once you actually go into mix in, you're not having already adjusted levels on your mixer. So for example, if we take a look at my entire fader section at the bottom on my mixing panel, you can see everything is set to parity. This is all done through the gain staging and if you haven't looked at the first video where I use virtual instruments I recommend going back and take a look at that video and this one's just going to expand upon the theories that we've already covered in that. So what I've got on the right hand side in the green channel is my bass guitar and if I just press play on that you'll see if you take a look at the meter reading that it's, it's already been input way too hot. So you can see that we're peaking out at about minus 6 dB. Now, that's not going to cause too much of a problem, it's not clipping, but what happens is that if we keep all of our instruments at that level, we're going to find that on the, the left-hand side here that our master channel is going to suddenly start hitting the 0 dB and maybe going way over and peaking, and that's going to be a real problem, and that's something we want to avoid. Now, because we don't have any virtual instruments applied to this, this is just a direct line input for this particular instrument, I can't use the same method that I used in the first video. So we need to take a look at another way of working with this. Now, some audio workstations will have things like trim and gain plugins that you can use to adjust those, in, those levels. But Reaper itself doesn't ship with what you technically call a, a gain staging plugin or a clip plugin, or trim plugin, I should say. But what we do have is the JS volume utility. So I'm just going to get rid of my instance on here a second. And I'll show you how to add this in. So if we take a look, we've got all our effects path, our chain of effects available to us in the top section. And you can see my virtual instruments for my guitars, the Easy Mix, and the same for Easy Drummer. But we've got nothing on our bass because it's a direct line input. So I'm going to add a new effect to it. So I'm just going to hit the effect option. Uh, I'm just going to bring my palette over. And you can see that I've just filtered this on the term volume, and what that's done is given us the JS utility volume. We've got one for volume pan, but that's not what we want. We don't want to deal with the panning, we just want to deal with the volume. So I'm just going to click on that and OK it to insert that. Now, the important thing to remember with this is that this volume control has to be the first item on your effects chain. If you put this second or third, then anything that adds gain and so on before it will also be impacted by this volume effect. Now we want to control just the direct line input. If we add EQ and things like that on later on, then we need to adjust the gain independently on those to make sure we bring that back down to an, a, an adequate level. But this is just gonna deal with the actual line input from this particular recorded instrument. So you can see we've got a pretty simple interface available to us. We've got two adjustment options. We can set some presets and we've got the, uh, the peak meters on the left and right hand side. Now by default there's a 6 dB adjustment, that's a plus adjustment which obviously would boost us even higher and push us up onto the 0 dB and we start clipping. So I can just set that to 0 just to ensure we've got nothing being adjusted on you and if I press the play you'll see it just effectively mimics what we can see on the actual bass channel and if we take a look because it's the only instrument that's playing it's pretty much exactly the same as we can see on our master channel. So we're peaking out at minus 6 dB. So let's just stop this. Now, I've got a couple of ways I can use this. I can adjust the dB by a minus or a plus value to compensate for the input level, or I can actually set a maximum volume. In other words, the maximum uh, dB that I want to hit. So it won't go above that no matter how loud it gets. It will always be hitting that as the maximum. So that becomes the sort of the shelf right at the top that stops us going any further. So you can use it either way. For this example, I'm just going to go through and show you both ways and how they have the same impact. The benefit of using the max volume is you don't have to use any maths. You don't need to run through the entire song, find out what the maximum level you're hitting is throughout the entire playback, and then compensate for it. You can just use the max volume and say that right across the board, 
this is the max I want to go to. So let's take a look at how those work. So because I've run the track through and I know that I'm hitting minus six at its, its peak, then what I can do is I want to get to minus 18 as my sort of maximum shelf for this particular example. So minus six plus minus 12 gives us the minus 18. So I can just set that to be minus 12. And now if I just run this, we'll find that we shouldn't go over 18 at any point. So you can see that's already compensated for our level. You can see we're just going up, bouncing up around the, the, uh, the minus 18 mark, which is exactly where we want it to be. So that's one way of doing it. I set that back to zero. Like I say, the alternative way of doing it is saying that we want a max volume of minus 18 dB. So now if I just run that again, you'll find that we no longer go anywhere near going over the minus 18 dB. It sits at a peak on there. If you take a look on the base channel, you take a look on our master channel, or you take a look on the meters on this, you can see that's the maximum we're going to. If we take a look on the left hand side, that's what's actually going on. So you can see we're hitting the minus 5.9, minus 6, and this is the affected version of it. So hitting the minus 18 at a maximum. So that's effectively how this plugin works. Now, one of the other things we can do with this is if we know we want to work in, in this sort of setting and limit all the time, we don't want to go over that, we could just easily save that as a preset. So we can just come up to the top, hit the plus, save preset and we can just say we call this minus 18 db max and click ok what we could have done there was when we hit the plus we could have had another option which is save the preset as a default so that would mean that every time you loaded this plugin in that it would have that setting set as default entirely up to you you want to do it so that's how easy it is to work with this. Now there's one other thing we can do, and we can set this to be part of our track default. So every time we create a new track, we can apply a template to it that'll have this particular um, effect or effects chain. If you've got multiple effects you want to sort of save as a, as a default, you can do that quickly and easily within Reaper. So let's see how we can do that next. So all we need to do is come down onto our track we right click anywhere over the actual track itself, not up where we've got the effects and so on. We need to go onto the track itself. Right click and we've got save track as template. So we can just hit that and we can save that out. And we call it whatever we want. So we'll just call this one uh, minus 18 dB. And we'll just call it JS plugin track. Simple as that. So we can save that, close this plugin down, and now if I want to insert a track, I can just simply come to here and say insert new track from template. And you can see there's all our templates. So we do the minus 18 dB JS plugin track, click on that, there's our plugin, everything all set up exactly as we want it to be. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. It's another way of working with gain staging. It's all before it hits the fader. So everything you want to do afterwards is before the fader takes any effect on your actual mix. And it's a great way of working if you're not using virtual instruments. I hope you found this useful. If you have, hit the subscribe button, share this video, share all our videos with anyone you want to. And until next time, take care.